So whenever you are searching any website, you basically design those APIs and your browser is basically hitting those APIs. Now, why do you, then how does HTTP comes into the picture? Like you are hitting the normal APIs from your browser. Now, what was the use of this HTTP in every website? Like every website has HTTP in the big. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing great. So in this video, we're going to talk about HTTP. Now, why we are talking about HTTP is if you have seen my last video, you would know that if you are not, then please go watch it. Uh, so in that video, we discussed about how uh, the main naming system work, how a website, you get routed to a website. So in this video, we'll talk about HTTP. Like whenever you load a website, why is there an HTTP or HTTPS written at the start of a website? Like why is it needed? What does this HTTP or HTTPS do basically? So HTTP is nothing just a protocol. It is a layer seven protocol and at layer four, it uses TCP. So uh, as you must have uh, learned in your network architecture, I will not go into the details that there are seven layers of the network. At the layer seven, we have the application layer. We have the HTTP protocol. And at the level four, which is the transport layer, we have TCP or UDP. So HTTP uses TCP at the level four. So uh, HTTP connection can be made between the client and the server and at layer 7 the HTTP connection will be made between your browser and the application. Now uh, how these two come into picture and how these two work with each other we will see now. So suppose there are uh, a set of different clients which are connected to a server. Now each of this is maintaining a HTTP uh, connection to basically uh, have a request. Now, uh, in a system, basically, there are a lot of APIs. We have heard that uh, there are REST APIs, there can be SOAP APIs. So whenever you are searching any website, you basically design those APIs and your browser is basically hitting those APIs. Now, why do you, then how does HTTP comes into the picture? Like you are hitting the normal APIs from your browser. Now, what was the use of this HTTP in every website? Like every website has HTTP in the beginning. So, that is because HTTP is responsible for loading the initial HTML website that you have. So HTML or JavaScript or whatever website that you have. So basically it is used to fetch the assets and load the website in your browser so that, and after that you basically start interacting with the website servers and uh, making call to their APIs. So on layer four, a TCP connection is established. Now the question comes till how much time this connection can be established. So uh, is it that whenever you open a browser and a website, this TCP connection is maintained with the server or it is a new TCP connection is created on every call that you make to that API or any, any API or the website whenever you click uh, create, uh, like wherever you open a website. So uh, to answer this, whenever a TCP connection is created, it stays open until uh, like once it is established. Why it has to stay open? Because if you close this connection, you would again have to reinitiate uh, this uh, TCP connection. So like we discussed that TCP connection is a three way handshake. Your client, which is your browser, it sends a message. The server sends, uh, sorry, the server sends back that, okay, you can create. Then the client again sends back the acknowledgement. So this is a three way handshake, which happens between the client and the server to establish this connection. And this takes some time. Obviously, the, there is some data packets being transferred. There will be some time which will be taken. Now, how will this time which is taken on what things it will depend on? So it will depend on the location of the server that you are trying to access. It can be a local server. It can be intercontinental server or transcontinental server. So local server can be like you are accessing your website, uh, a state website, and the servers are in that state only. So in that case, the time would be less. Intercontinental means uh, you, are ex you are in India accessing any other website in Asia and transcontinental is basically you are trying to access a website uh, which is which has its servers in US. So uh, on, and on the basis of that, the time uh, will depend. Now, this is also why whenever a big website or a person is creating a web global website, they would also try to install the servers in that particular country or closest to that country so that this load time, initial load time also decreases and provides a better experience because every time a TCP connection would have to be made 
this distance have to be traveled three times which is a lot uh, and it can take like one or two seconds now how long can this tcp connection stay open now in this on there it on the tcp protocol it is no no limit because it is on the layer 4 but still there are the issues caused by the router and the firewall so your connection is going through the isp router your computer also has a firewall so when you are not working on a particular website or for a particular time this tcp connection breaks down a good example of this like when this happens so what do you do like open a list of websites on your browser okay and then uh, like work whatever you want to do and then just put your laptop to sleep and then whenever you come back you again go back to that website and just click on any of the link you would see that the website would reload now that reloading which is happening is basically this tcp connection being created again so this is why uh, this happens now let's come to http so we talked about what is happening at the layer 4 now let's see what's happening at the layer 7 now first http protocol which came that was http 1.0 now http 1.0 has a lot of limitations had a lot of limitations so it said that there can be only one request per connection so for example if this is a client and if this is a server so for one uh, uh, for every request you have to establish a new connection so like we discussed the connection establishment time is huge so for every request if you are creating a tcp connection the websites would take a lot of time to load this is a big issue Therefore, then came HTTP 1.1. Now, uh, before we go to 1.1, what is basically loading? So we are just trying to load the initial website assets, just like the images that you see, or if you are on a video website, the initial thumbnails of the videos that you see, the name of the website, the logo, etc. All these assets which are there, HTTP is basically trying to load that. You do not have to create any other request. It is just loading all these assets whenever you go on a particular website now then came HTTP 1.1 it said that uh, the connection can remain open uh, but uh, and several requests can be done through that particular connection but it also had uh, a limitation that you cannot do any parallel requests so for example you have to uh, load a thumbnail then you have to load a uh, logo then you have to load some text so for each of these assets you would have to make calls and you have to have to make sequential calls so uh, first you would make a call to fetch the title then you would make a call to fetch uh, the thumbnails then you would make a call to fetch the other assets so these sequential requests would keep on going and this would also take a lot of time so this issue had to be solved so this caused obviously several load issues the connection which was established as was very low now in a website multiple assets have to be loaded that's what i have discussed now assets have to be loaded parallelly now, how do we load these assets parallelly therefore came the http pipelining which was a savior for this now what is http pipelining it says that you can make the parallel call to the server you do not have to wait for the server to respond back so you make the parallel calls and you load the server so everything is solved right but no, in this also HTTP pipelining was built over HTTP 1.1 only. So this also had the issues that the server, the connection which is made to the server, the server has to respond back to the request in FIFA order only. So what this means that uh, you made 10 parallel calls, but the server got uh, in any order, the server got these requests. The server would respond back one by one only and uh, suppose the first call the server received was a big asset so first it would have to wait for that asset to go back and then all other assets would have would be loaded which would also take a lot of time so for example think like that you open a website the images got loading first like the first image but you are not able to see any text or the logo so that can be this issue with http pipeline now how do we solve this issue then came HTTP 2.0 to basically solve this issue. It introduced multiplexing. Now what it is, is that uh, there can be the issue that we had, the server can respond to these packets in any order. So like uh, it will respond, like it does not have to be a FIFO. So the 
server can respond to the request for the lower smaller asset first also like according to the response time for each of the asset the server can respond and all of this can be uh, done on the single tcp connection but what if this tcp connection is lost now if this tcp connection is lost so suppose that you made 10 requests okay now out of these 10 requests the five requests became successful but at that time your tcp connection got lost now how will this connection get lost suppose you at your browser uh, uh, like your internet got disconnected at a time but the request were already went and or something like this happened but the server already has the responses created for you so this has this major issue that if the connection tcp connection somehow breaks you would not be able to get the assets even though they were successfully loaded and after that came http 3.0 it uses quick instead of tcp uh, now we will discuss about what is quick uh, and uh, why it is better than tcp and the, at the layer 4 so we will be discussing about that uh, and there are many websites which today also function on http 2.0 because in this you know the issues that we discussed they are not very much as compared to 1.0 and 1.1 but still there are issues uh, whereas with http 3.0 these issues were also corrected now HTTP 3.0 also has some issues. We will be also discussing that in some other video, also about quick in some other video. So I hope you like this video and it help you get a clarity on why do we need HTTP in the beginning of every website. Uh, so I hope you like this one and I'll see you in the next one.